All right, everybody, I would like to do a disassembly video. Um, this is a Canon FD 35mm F2 SSC concave lens. It's in amazing condition. It's about 50 years old. It's got some oil on the aperture blades. Uh, but aside from that, this thing has not seen much use. So um, anyway, while I'm doing that breakdown to get to the aperture blades, figured I'd film it, go over at least the basics of how to get this lens apart couple little tips for once you um, almost have it completely apart. Um, this lens does have a tricky um, helicoid assembly. Um, it's not that hard if you take some pictures of where everything should be. Also, there are a number of ways to get into this lens. I'm just going to show you mine. Um, you might not like it. You might like it. It uh, doesn't matter. It's easy for me. I've had good results with it. Um, I don't have to take apart the helicoid before taking out the front element block um, this way. Um, although I got to wiggle it out a little bit. So um, anyway, don't try this if you don't know what you're doing or if you're afraid of hurting your lens or if you're inexperienced. You do need the right tools. Today I'll be using JIS screwdrivers from Amazon. 20 bucks for a whole pack of them. Get some of those. I have a lens element sucker tool. Removes the elements without me having to touch them. I've got some Japan Hobby Tool rubber suction thingies. They're just for the nameplate, really, but um, anyway. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I've got a spanner wrench in this silver bag. I'll take that out. Uh, and then I've got some gloves. I have some cleaning um, things that uh, you'll probably want. One is essentially just a really good alcohol. Um, and we have goof off and lighter fluid. Lighter fluid is for um, cleaning the old grease off. Goof off is there for um, uh, it's a solvent. So essentially when the people put this lens together, they used contacts of mint or Loctite or something similar to um, bind the screw in parts from unscrewing, which is nice of them. So, um, however, we will have to potentially use that to get off a couple of retaining rings in here. Um, I think that should be about it. I don't think we'll need any other tools, but um, those are the tools that I'm going to use and that I recommend for working on these old Canon FD lenses. All right, so first things first, um, have a clean area. If you already know what you're doing and you're just here to see how to disassemble this thing, that's fine, but have a clean area. It's going to be way easier to reassemble this lens if your area is clean and you stay organized. Um, personally, I have paper towels here. I'm not sure if you can see them in the video, but I've got paper towels there. Um, not because this is going to be a messy pro project, um, simply because when little screws like to fall out of places, sometimes the paper towels stop them from bouncing so far. Uh, so I always put down some paper towels to assist me in that. And if I'm working on a table that's not white, um, it helps me see stuff. So um, secondly, be organized in your disassembly. Um, if you do it, want to do it the way I do it, that's fine. Um, but be organized. Um, so we're going to start uh, disassembling this lens from the front. And I'm going to start putting it here in a line. And then when we get to the aperture blades, it'll be about here. And then we'll start from the rear and here, and we'll have a working space here. Uh, at least that's what I generally do. Um, so uh, you see that I've donned gloves. Um, I don't want to get this grease in here on my hands. And then if I do get it on my glove, I can take my glove off, put a new glove on, and the grease won't get on other parts of the lens that the grease shouldn't be on. So uh, here we go. Um, remove front lens cap. Uh, in the Japan, in these, the Japan Hobby Tool brands of these, uh, most of these Canon FDs are 55 millimeter fronts, uh, and it's the second one in the thing. You just put it on the front, unscrew it. Hopefully, it's not too tight. Sometimes these name plates are pretty tight. Um, this one seems to be pretty decent, though. So. Got it off no problem, so we're just gonna, if we can hold on to that, just spin this off. That's pretty much there. All right, and I put my nameplate on top of my cap. 
So that exposes a number, I'm not going to be able to zoom in or give too many detail shots, um, but that exposes a number of screws. There are four holding just this little piece that holds the nameplate on there uh, that we need to remove. Um, if you are a Simod um, conversion kit owner, you probably have one of these little screwdrivers. They're really nice. Uh, if not, you can use the red handle from the JIS. This is already out though, so I'm just going to use it. I'm going to remove these four screws. And you'll see me put them in a little pile. And then I'll put the circular ring around the pile. So as long as nothing absolutely crazy happens, my screws will be within the part that they hold on to the camera. So you saw that, the, the screw came flying out, but it hit the paper towel and stuck. Um, so that's the primary reason I use the paper towels. And that's four, and then this little front piece should lift right off. Uh, and I'll put those again, I'll start these a little bit higher, put just that around the screws, keep it organized. All right, from there you've got, in this lens, a very contact cemented um, set of screws holding your focus ring on. Uh, and that's nice because when you set these up with follow focuses, especially wireless, um, you don't want these to slip when you're racking focus. So um, that's nice. But we're just going to remove these three. Oftentimes these screws will have tiny little washers on them um, as this is a pressure fit or excuse me, pressure is helping keep these two things together. Um, although I do not see a washer on that screw. Uh, but they are very, very small. Okay, that one's got one. And the other one does have one. It's very small. Okay, and then the third screw. And that's going to get us one step closer. So that'll take the focus ring off. And as you can see now, you can see the focus stopper. Um, you can see how the helicoid works. So when it hits that, it stops for infinity. When it hits this, it stops for close focus. And this is where later in the disassembly, it's going to be very important that you stay organized and take some pictures of where some things should be because if you can tell, there's a lot more travel. If we take this piece off now, this whole helicoid is going to come off, uh, which is troublesome, um, in my opinion. And that's why I take it apart the way I do, because I like to take a picture of what's going on in here um, before we get there. And I guess we could just start from the back at this point. Um, but to get to the front of these aperture blades, we're just going to go this way. Um, so either way. So for the next part, we are going to need our spanner wrench. These are generally, um, there's a lot of cheap ones out there on Amazon. This is a new pair. I had my last pair for like almost a decade and it did just fine, but finally the little sharp tip ones bent. Um, so I ordered this one from Amazon. It's by Newer. It's actually really nice. Um, yeah, little tip, I leave one completely tight on here, and then I just adjust the other one. Uh, so on this lens, there's this metal retaining ring. It's right past the black, and you'll see little things here and a little thing here that you'll use your spanner wrench to loosen up. Um, now, for this one, the sharp tip option is probably not going to be the best option because they are, um, the slot is kind of wide. So these newer the brand is newer, they're not new, although I hope the one I ordered is. Uh, anyway, these come with all sorts of different heads on here, like screwdriver heads essentially. So there is one in here that's kind of like a half screwdriver, uh, and it fits into this very well. So we're going to use that one to loosen this. And I try to keep the metal away from the glass as much as possible. So for these ones, we're going to put the tip in. 
if you encounter any resistance that's more than you know you're comfortable with, um, get some of this goof off. Uh, this is really good stuff. It's mostly acetone. You can just get pure acetone if you want, but I couldn't find a small little acetone container. Um, but this is mostly acetone, and I just get a Q-tip wet a little bit, and I just run it around the edge. I wait five minutes, come back. I try. If it's still super stuck, I do the same thing. Run it on the edge to get it to seep in there um, and move on. But we will try it without that first. So we'll put the spanner wrench in, keep good pressure here, and we will slowly loosen, and it is good and loose. So from here, I've got this already out, so we'll just quickly unspin it with that. Be careful though, again, you do have glass exposed here at this point, so um, be careful. Go slower than you think you need to. This is not a race. Um, also, later, when you are reassembling this, if you get this in and tight, and you go to check the focus, and you see this ring start to move, it means that your helicoid has been put on incorrectly. The two pieces that screw in, in this lens it's actually three, but something in there is off, um, and it's not allowing this ring to sit all the way, or to seat all the way um, that it needs to. So. Um, very important ring um, and a very important tell if you're paying attention that you don't have the helicoid back together correctly if when you put this back on later and go to focus, if this moves, if you see it moving, it's 100% fact that you've got an issue going on in your helicoid reassembly. Okay, so again, just keep moving down the line here. And then from here... Um, I mean, you're pretty much able to access the entire front block at this point. Um, so if you can see, when you spin this, this whole front block of lenses moves. Um, pretty cool design. And you can just kind of grab the front and then it will wiggle out. Uh, again, there are other ways to take this out, um, which go into the back at this before you get here and then you can more easily kind of get it out because this will unscrew. But for putting it back together, in my opinion, um, this method makes it much easier. So I just kind of nicely, be nice about it, wiggle this out. And you'll see a little metal spacing ring in there. You'll start to see the, the focus um, holders as well. So, and this whole block comes out. Um, now at this point, this is flat, so I set this down face down here. Um, but at this point, we are into the aperture mechanism. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are three screws in there that's holding the aperture in place. And um, I can already see grease in here, and it just got on my fingers. So I'm going to um, replace my gloves, put new gloves on. Okay, so again, we are halfway into this lens. Um, and at this point, we'll start from the back and we'll start to move towards the aperture blades from the back, which will require us to remove the mount. And these FD mounts are ridiculous. There are so many moving parts in this mount, it's crazy. Um, so I generally try to um, keep them pretty together when I'm taking it all apart. Um, so we'll get to that next, but just to explain this little block here, um, these pieces will come off. You can unscrew them from here, and that will get this ring out, and this has been greased. Um, this slides up and down, so there's not a lot of grease. When it comes to grease, a little is a lot. Um, so you can get all of this off, and I will get all of this off here um, after this after this disassembly, <clears throat> excuse me, to get it all clean. Um, but pretty easy to get into the optics at this point in the front block. This has two holes for your spanner wrench. Um, that opens up and then under that it, there's another element that you can take out as well. So um, luckily this lens is extremely clean. So I am not going to get into the optics of that. But if you want to, super simple, 
Use your lens sucker to take everything out. Don't touch the glass if you can get away with not. All right, so uh, again, we started at the front. We made it all the way through to the aperture assembly. It's right there. Um, now I'm gonna flip the lens over. I'm going to remove the cap. I'm gonna put the cap up here. Um, I'm actually gonna use this to um, put lighter fluid in and to let some screws and stuff sit uh, so I can clean them uh, before putting it back together. So that's why I put it up there. Um. All right, my camera died, so I don't know how long I was talking before I figured that out. But um, I figured we'll just go back to the starting at the back um, here. So again, we've gone through the front, we've gotten to the aperture assembly, we've exposed the focus stopper um, and all that. So now we need to go to the back. And on the back, these FD mounts are pretty crazy. There's so many moving parts to them, it's absolutely nuts. Um, so I try to keep these as intact as possible when removing them. Uh, first step is to put your aperture on the largest number. There is a spring-based mechanism within this mount that when your aperture is wider, it is opening the aperture width. So when you take the mount off, that spring slaps back. Uh, I've never seen it damage anything, but the possibility is there. To eliminate the slap back, just set it on the largest number. Uh, that way when you remove this mount, nothing crazy will happen. Uh, pretty easy to get this mount off. Um, find the red dot on the outside of the silver breech lock here. On the inside of that red dot, you're gonna see a little button. Uh, it's not this little silver thing here, but it's under the silver thing a little, the, the breech lock um, silver ring a little bit. And it's just a little button. I've zoomed in a little bit at this point. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better, but when you push that, it releases the silver breech lock. You saw it spin, and now we can get to all three of these screws. Um, these screws, if you've not taken them out before, are probably gonna be pretty tight. Um, most of these on this specific lens, for me, has been um, kind of a headache. So I recommend using a soldering iron, uh, and you just take your soldering iron, pretend this is the tip, uh, put it on your screw head, let it sit there for a little bit, try to open it. Uh, you do not want to put too much pressure on these screws because you could strip them, especially if you're not using a JIS screwdriver. Um, but if you um, are using a JIS screwdriver and it's still requiring a lot of force, keep hitting it with heat and or use a little bit of solvent uh, and let it sit on there. You do, again, you just you don't want to damage these screws because you can't really find these screws anywhere. Uh, the, the thread count and pitch and whatever else on these screws are very weird. So finding replacement screws is more difficult than just not chancing it. Um, so I've got my soldering iron set up over, um, over there. So I'm gonna go heat this up and then we'll get these screws out of here. All right, so I hit each screw with 30 seconds on my little soldering iron. <clears throat> I don't know, it's like a super cheap little soldering iron on Amazon. I just have it at 450 degrees, 30 seconds. You don't wanna to do too, too much, but you wanna do enough that loosens up the, uh, whatever they use to secure the screws. Um, this one was very tight. Um, not the tightest that I've had to do before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but very tight, so it took a full 30 seconds of heat to uh, do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish removing these screws. And again, now we're starting from the bottom up. So I've got them over here. There's one. There's two. Uh, and for organization and for the video, just so I can keep everything here for you, um, let's just start at the top here. So we've got rear lens cap. And we'll start with the rear mount up there. So I got all three screws unscrewed and out. I've got my aperture set at f16. And as you just saw, the mount fell right out. No problem. Nothing slapping around. Um, no problems. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but there is some, some buildup of oil here. So this grease is definitely being is definitely breaking down. So we're gonna clean that up um, when we get in there. So that's the mount. All right, next is going to be our aperture control. 
Uh, and the next step for that is going to be taking out this little post and there's a, uh, a spring on the back of it. Uh, it's important that you get both pieces. Those are to help your mount stay into place. Um, very small. If you take your mount off crazily, it might have popped away. Um, probably not. It's probably seated right in there. So take that out and then you're going to find this little metal rail. And what that does is attaches here and here. Um, so when you're spinning your aperture, if you can see that there's a little slot that this piece travels in and it hits the wall and stops so it doesn't go too far, uh, whatever. So we're going to have to take that off. There's going to be one short screw, one longer short screw. Um, these generally aren't in there too, too tight, but that doesn't mean um, you want to stop paying attention because they will strip. So I put these pieces all together. I put the tiny little uh, metal post with the spring. I put these two screws um, and that little piece of metal that the screws are, um, this guy here, that all into one little pile in the aperture control ring in a second. Um, now important when you're taking these pieces off to know is that there are two ball bearings that operate the click um, and they are found under the ring that we're about to remove. So a lot of times they're going to get stuck on the inside of the ring or they might stay seated in their position. But essentially there's a little divot under this ring and a little divot under this ring here where those ball bearings sit in. And there's a spring under them that keeps them loaded. Uh, that's what gives you the clicks and that's what makes your aperture not move. So when I take this apart generally, I like to have the aperture numbers facing up. Then you just very lightly pull. And this isn't any resistance, I just don't want the ball bearings to go flying. So and you can see one ball bearing there, one ball bearing there, and this is all good here. And we'll put that around those pieces. And a lot of times these ball bearings are magnetic, so I just used my little screwdriver, got the two ball bearings, and now we will put them in this pile as well so we keep it all organized. Okay, we're finally getting there. Um, at this point, put your lens into infinity um, here, and that will expose more of this rear element. That we will need our spanner wrench for this, and we might probably need um, some solvent. Uh, we'll do a little test. So there's two little notches on the outside of this ring um, that we're going to sit our half, whatever these things are called, they're half of a, of a tip right into there. We're going to be very careful. The glass is inside, but if, you, if you're too crazy, you will hit that glass. And if you do, it will probably scratch. So uh, for this one, I'm generally fairly careful. Uh, and there we go. So now the whole optical block or excuse me, the whole rear element assembly um, should unscrew out of here. Uh, and there we go. So that's the whole rear group. And we can set this face down. I generally try to set everything face down or face up, depending <coughs> where the glass is situated. Um, this one, though, I'm going to put face down. Both elements are recessed, um, which is good. So... Um, all right, at this point, now this is where things get, I wouldn't say complicated. I would say that you need to be very documenty. <laughs> um, you need to document where things are sitting um, when, when this is happening. So one thing I generally notice is how far this is sitting, uh, this black part from this little metal rim. Again, I'm not sure how close this is. Uh, how much detail you get. Um, but this is where I start getting really attentive to details because when this piece screws out and that piece screws out, um, when you're putting it back together, it could cause problems because of that floating element uh, that, that's in there. Uh, and the helicoid not being put back together will cause issues, I promise. So um, generally take pictures. 
of pretty much everything we do from here on out. So I take a picture of we, where we're sitting there at infinity. And I take a picture of where the focus stopper is currently. And then I take a picture of where this is at infinity on this side. Um, if you want to get real cool about it, you can take a video, but I find that pictures are a little bit nicer um, just to organize yourself. So then I'll screw this all the way to close focus side. And I will take a picture there just so I can see when I have it back together that um, everything's good. Uh, for the last 10 of these or so, I was able to screw it right back in without a single hiccup at all. Um, and since this is a three-piece moving deal, that's pretty impressive, if I must say so myself. So, All right, so I got those pictures done. Good to go. Next, we're going to take the focus stopper off of the lens. Uh, it's held by three screws. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of lock tight or contact cement or whatever on these, so cleaning these up is going to be kind of sucky. Um, but at least they're not screwed in so tight that I can't unscrew them. Uh, so, okay, so we've got our three little screws here. And we'll just put these over here. We'll take the little focus stopper off. And that's how you adjust your infinity or fine, fine control your lens. So at this point, some things could happen. Okay, be very careful without documenting where things are. Um, because it's, it's essential that you know where these things are. <laughs> um, so if you unstart unscrewing this without that stopper, this piece is going to come out. And if you don't know where to put that piece back in, getting it all back together is going to be a headache. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I mean, real quick, you could take out this aperture assembly if you want. We may as well just go ahead and um, do that. These screws generally aren't use, they don't use like uh, Loctite or contact cement on because they don't move. Um, so they should be pretty easy to get out. But still, before we take it out, again, I'm just going to say this for, for y'all's sake, but um, get used to taking pictures of where everything is situated. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to take a video just so I can show where the everything is sitting with the aperture. Um, as you can see inside, probably there are different pieces of the aperture. There is a bar that comes through this back side here, so you would kind of want to know where that's at. All right. So once you remove all three of these screws, one just fell out on me, the aperture assembly literally just pops right out. Um, there's no magic holding it in, so be careful. So that's the third screw, and if you can see that, this is what's holding it in. So we can pop that out, boom, right there. The aperture is generally just really thin metal blades on this lens. Um, I've not seen plastic ones, although sometimes they, they do occur from what I understand. So, All right, so that's the aperture, boom, boom, boom. Um, and now we can start to do some stuff, okay? Now, as I told you many times now, take your pictures. Turn on your flash, whatever you need to do, um, because it's very important that you know what things are looking like when you start to unscrew these. There's these little metal posts in there that if you don't get in correctly, will prevent you from getting it in there correctly. Um, there are these little things. So at a certain point, as you screw this, this rear piece goes in and out, but it doesn't spin. And that's because this little metal post is holding it in place. 
but at a certain point you're going to unscrew that and that metal post is going to end and that middle part is going to start spinning. Do you see that? And it's very important that you know where these things are so you can make sure that when you're putting it back together you get that little metal post. So I like to make a document of um, or a documentation with a video of how much space is there right here in between this black thing and this black thing. This is not going to make any sense until you're looking at it, but these two screws are attached to a metal post, and that metal post is very important that it goes back in the same spot. Okay, so that's my aperture control. My metal post is right across, and this is screwed all the way into infinity. Okay, there's no gap there. Okay, and same thing. I'm going to unscrew it very slowly and that there's going to be a very certain point where that metal post is no longer in that groove and that middle part starts to spin. Okay, and it's very important that you get that spot correct because if you are going to put this thing back together, that needs, that's what's controlling your focus. So it's very important that that is exactly correct. So as soon as that makes any sort of movement, I come back here and I generally take a picture of this or a video. The more detail you can get. So I can see that it's about right there when it's disconnecting and it's just on the last dot. Okay, and there's just one little sliver of screw in space or excuse me, thread showing for your hel on the silver, on the screw in part of the silver part of the helicoid, my God. And then I can look in there and I can see that there are one, two, three, four threads showing behind this post. Okay, I don't know if you can see this post, but right here is where we have disconnected. Okay, so if I spin this anymore, it's going to now start letting that middle piece spin. Okay, so the next thing you need to document is at a certain point, this is going to disconnect from this. Okay, you're unscrewing the pieces. So for me, it's right there. So I'm going to take another video of what this looks like when it starts. So this video is where the screw in starts. So it's going to be right on the second dot here. And you're going to be able to screw it in. And if you do this correctly, when the time comes, you'll just be able to screw it right back in. No headaches, no problems. So we'll stop that video. There's going to be one more thing that we do need to document. Okay, and that's when you remove these pieces. This black piece here is also screwed into this silver piece. So it's very important that when you're going to put this back together, this black piece is screwed in a specific amount to allow the movement within the elements to focus correctly. So before I take that piece out, I am going to take one more video of where this piece is in relation to the screws on the, that hold the focus stoppers. And I just use those because I can count them. I can see everything that it is. So right now I'm looking that this screw here is in between the second and third dot there. So I know when I'm putting this piece back together that that screw goes in between the second and third dot on mine. And when that happens, I can then screw this piece onto the top and we'll be good to go. And it won't have any problems. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so now this piece will unscrew from the silver piece. Do you see that? Okay. And just so you notice, like I like I was mentioning, this grease is <laughs> not very dirty at all. I mean, it's still mostly white. Uh, this lens is extremely clean uh, in terms of how much it's been used, which is weird because the only thing on this entire lens that I see that shows use at all is this rubber focus ring. Uh, it's been mended in a way that is odd. 
Uh, at some point in time, someone fixed they they fixed this or opened it for some reason. Maybe it was just loose because whatever reason. But anyway, all right. So let's take this piece out of here. I'm just going to unscrew this way, and eventually it will unscrew out of the back. And there you go. That's the entire lens apart. Uh, again, I haven't messed with the element groups. I'm not going to take those apart. There's no reason to. There's nothing going on in there. Um, and taking them apart will also expose them to dust or fingerprints if you're not careful or, or whatever. So um, I am going to clean up these pieces. Again, they're very clean to begin with. I mean, it's almost silly for me not to clean it since I have it apart, but it just doesn't need it. Um, I'm going to though, just because again earlier we saw that there was some, some oil degradation. Um, so we're just going to spruce this up a bit. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clean this. I use lighter fluid to clean. I don't use anything special uh, in terms of these parts to clean it with. I'll use a reusable microfiber towel or even paper towels uh, for this part. doesn't really matter. Um, Quick discussion, when you're putting this back together, um, you make sure that you are putting grease on any parts that are moving. Um, so that's this thread, that's this thread inside, that's the inside of this thread, that's this thread of this piece, and that's also your aperture control um, is going to need um, some grease. Uh, again, a little goes a long way. I'm going to use the liquid molly. I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up. 